So hello there and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me Cy Pitway. Today on the show we're going to show you uh, a few different things. Uh, over the last probably year or so I've had people asking me if I'll review stuff and sending stuff to me and I've not really had the time properly to dedicate to doing some stuff. Uh, so what we're showing you is the Artemis P15 which is my new rifle but we're putting some custom parts on it uh, and there's three people I want to shout out for this Jake Bowman, Mark Dempsey and Damian West. Damian West uh, is the owner of Digital Night Stalker uh, and he sent me a night vision unit to test. Mark Dempsey uh, has got a custom shroud and later on in another episode I'll be using one of his silent hammer kits uh, on the P15 as well uh, and Jake Bowman does 3D printed items for uh, different rifles but obviously today I'll be using and showing on the Artemis P15 but Jake does uh, make custom 3D printed items uh, parts for other rifles you've just got to get in touch with him and later on in the episode there will be a link to uh, Jake's website to get hold of him uh, and if you've got uh, another rifle HW100 or whatever and you want a custom part 3D printed Jake's your man. I just want to take you through some custom 3D printed items what a friend of mine from my Facebook uh, account called Jake Bowman has sent me uh, and Jake's got a couple of really high quality 3D printers uh, and he makes custom parts obviously on his printers for different rifles uh, HW100 I know he does uh, and also the Artemis P15 now for those who watched the last video we put out this is an Artemis P15 this is a 177 rifle uh, what I had on loan from Sandville Field Sports uh, and other than the shot tracks to camera, the scope and the mount on this rifle, everything else is absolutely standard but it shoots absolutely perfect uh, so good so that uh, I've spoken to Tony at Sandal Field Sports and I've actually bought this rifle off him and I'm going to keep this one for myself but what I'd like to do is show you some parts like what Jake sent me through uh, show you the quality of the printing what he does it's second to none I've had a look at it and it's absolutely perfect and his prices are really really good he sells on Facebook and he also sells on eBay uh, what I will do is I'll put a link at the bottom of this episode uh, to Jake's site uh, uh, I've got some information on my phone what he texted me because he didn't put all the information in with the parts he forgot by mistake uh, but I'll bit read them off for you in a second so I'll start showing you so we've got just more book pads here, look. Well, these have been 3D printed and hopefully you can see the quality on these are absolutely perfect. Uh, and they even come with a packet with the screws to fit into the, the rifle. So I'll just pick up the, uh, the rifle and as standard it comes with this little book pad here which is, uh, I believe it's just stuck on people have uh, told me. Uh, and you can just prise that off. Uh, and then obviously you can then put on your adjustable butt pad, tighten it up uh, and then basically get it to, uh, to, to fit wherever it suits you best. What he also does though, he's got these adjustable biathlon butt pads as well. Uh, and they're adjustable with an Allen key, you can see hopefully ear and ear. Uh, you can move them up and down and then tighten them up uh, to it so it fits. You can actually get it to fit, that's actual... Um, I suppose it could be like that whichever however you want it to fit your shoulder you just push it on your shoulder and then tighten it up like so and that same again that can then fit uh, on the back of the stock and you can have a either a biathlon type butt pad or an adjustable one like this what can tighten up you'll notice the cocking lever on the Artemis is a nice looks like some sort of stainless steel but what you can also do is if you're using a bi biathlon type butt pad and you want uh, to make it look more like a biathlon rifle it's got these really high quality biathlon cocking levers uh, and I should imagine they just push on I'm, I can't really do everything at the minute one handed so I'm just going to push it on lightly but you can see now you've then got uh, it's not pushed on fully but a biathlon type cocking lever as well so you can just pull it out and cock like so. I'll just pull it off a second. What he also does is, standard on the Artemis, you get the standard cheek piece, which to me, it's, as I said in the last video, it's to say it's 
just a piece of plastic like so it's really comfy but Jake makes these custom ones as well uh, and they then you just push I think you've got to push them on and fit them on tightly I'm, they obviously fit over there once it's pushed down uh, you'll see in the back of the Artemis just here there's two screws so I should imagine you take them two screws out and then you can fit it through the two screws in there uh, and then you've got a really nice comfy raised really f soft well it's not soft it's flat and smooth plastic cheap piece as well if you wanted and finally the other bit he sent me this is really impressive the the 3d printing on this is absolutely amazing uh, and you can see there's a three-way weaver rail on this uh, but it what it does is you can fit this and I'll show you this all fit later it fits actually through there so the all goes through the sh through the cylinder uh, the, this bit here rests the barrel on and you can push it through like that and it will fit obviously it's hard to show you but sort of like, like that underneath and it allows you then to fit a bipod onto a weaver mount or if you want a torch, an IR torch or anything like that and because it's 3D printed it don't weigh anything it's, it's absolutely nothing, I could hardly feel that but it's going to be very strong uh, really really good so I'll just put this rifle down a bit and I'll just give you some of the prices I'm just pulling them off my phone so so the Biathlon cocking piece here that's only £11 and that's with postage, postage included cheek piece is £18 posted cylinder mount here this one here is only £20 posted and both both these book pads here pick whichever you want is £27.50 posted so I think that's you know really really good quality uh, and a really fair and cheap price now bearing in mind Jake's bought all these printers himself I'll also put some uh, links to some of his logos in this video and also show you a video, uh, not a video, uh, sorry, a picture he sent me showing you his actual 3D printers and you can see it's, it's quality equipment he's got. So if you are interested, you can see, you know, this stuff is highly, you know, the, the, it's high quality. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, and it's well worth buying but what I intend to do now is put a few of these bits on uh, and show you what it looks like actually on the gun now that the gun actually belongs to me right as promised I've uh, fitted some of the parts to which is now my own gun and you can see I've fitted this adjustable butt pad uh, and tested it looking through my scope uh, and get it nice and comfortable and it does make a big difference you can see that this is the original and the original has just got two like little rubber studs on and a bit of glue as I said uh, the new one is actually wider coming backwards so I had to move my scope mounts back to get a better eye relief but you can see or if you wanted to ever put that back on all you need to do is look put a little bit of glue on and push it back in the holes what are in the back uh, of the stock here You'll see I've put the, the new cheek piece on, it comes over. Uh, the old cheek piece is just a little piece of plastic like that. Like I said, with them two holes in, all I did is unscrewed the holes, uh, unscrewed the screws from the holes and put the new one on, and screwed it back on. Uh, and it's really nice and smooth. It, it actually, I didn't think that it'd make that much of an improvement, but uh, what Jake's done is designed something what does make a real big difference to this little plate. So yeah, I'm glad I put that on. You'll see I put the biathlon cocking handle on uh, and it cocks really smoothly. I'll just fire off into safe directions, obviously it's not loaded with a pellet. I fired that. And what I did find out, which I didn't realise at the start, is this adapter here, let's put the rifle on my knee, if you see, hopefully, I'm trying to get into a position, you can see a gap down the middle here, a slight gap. Uh, and what it is, it's quite clever. 
it's a friction fit so it means you don't have to have your bipod or your torch or whatever you want to use uh, on the rifle all the time and watch this it's a case of all you do it just slides over like that uh, and you can either put your bipod on and if you put your bipod on it clamps there and the friction fit holds it now I'm going to show you how strong this is all right, so this is on my knee at the moment because there's my hand and I'm imagining look the bipod now it's loose at the minute look the bipod is nipping it it nips it and it holds it so so strongly that you can actually lift the rifle and shake it and it doesn't move now obviously you don't always have to use a bipod uh, and so you could if you wanted to on this bottom one here you could have a torch on there as well so if you put uh, like a white red or you know any filtered torch on or an IR torch can go underneath uh, and that is also going to nip it as well and then when you obviously finished either with a bipod or a torch whatever you just take it off like that so it's not extra stuff that's a really good idea a lot of people have these on and they're on all the time whether you've got your bipod on or not well with this design from Jake it's absolutely great because you don't have to do that so you're not carrying extra stuff around as well I really like that idea and because you could have a bipod on there, you could also have a torch on there and something else on here. You know, you do whatever you want, but as you can see, look, <laughs> it really does work well. I'm really impressed with it. So, uh, thumbs up, Jake. Quality equipment uh, and the fit and finish is perfect. As you can see, even on the book pad, look, it's absolutely fit perfect. Okay, I've come on to one of my permissions uh, and I'm going to, because obviously I moved the scope rail back, I'm going to uh, do some check zero in. Uh, and the way I'm going to use this mount is as simple as this. Just going to use it just to put on my bipod quickly so you can see. Slide it over the cylinder. Tighten the clamp up. Just trying to do everything one hand at the minute. This is only a seven to nine inch bipod. It's a Deben Tilton one. You can tilt it and get the flat, um, get your crosshairs horizontal if the grounds is not even. And I've got a bubble on top of the scope here so I can actually level like so on the bubble and then tighten up the legs I'm at 33 yards or 30 meters So I'm just going to see how far it's off from when I moved it back. I've got a shoot and see target down here. I'm just going to have a shot. Okay, it's actually just moved it a little bit left, that's all. So that's not too bad at all. So I'm just going to move it right, a couple of clicks. Try three. See the rifle cocks ever so smooth. That's it, it's on. So you can see how the uh, the barrel, uh, sorry, the cylinder mount and the bipod is assisted getting a steady uh, and quick zero. What I'm going to do now though, because I like to obviously walk around and I'm going to take the bipod and the clamp off, as you see it's only a 30 second job, uh, and see how we get on. Uh, 
Let's set that one standing unsupported. Don't get much cleaner than that, does it? Yeah, really nice. And the uh, butt pad really helped get a real perfect eye alignment on the scope dead before it even hit the uh, rooftop oh look at that straight through them slats absolutely dead as a dome over there on that roof look that woody So, just going back, here's the standard shroud, what comes with the Artemis P15. And as I said before, it does quieten the muzzle blast more than not having it on, uh, but it's not the most quiet shroud I've ever come across. You can see it just comes over the end of the cylinder. Now to remove it, it's really simple, and I'm gonna show you this now. All you do, you unscrew, the shroud itself uh, and then you can just pull it off and over the top Oops. that's all the baffles just falling out over the top you'll see uh, there's like a little gauge here with an o-ring on that unscrews like so and comes off and you can see now the barrel screw cut what you can see is where the shroud was screwed into is here and it's got a little grub screw so all you do is you get your allen key we loosen the grub screw uh, like so and it comes off so you can see the barrel's quite short hence because it's a uh, all port starts here and finishes here. Now this is a good time when you can clean your barrel once you've got your shroud off it's really easy you can obviously cock uh, your rifle take the single shot adapter out uh, and you can pull it through and give the barrel a good clean and it's always good to do with uh, rifles like this. Right as you saw when I lifted the shroud off the baffles fell out and these are the baffles what come in the standard P15 and they all fit the same, they're all the same, they just fit into each other like so. So I'll just pop them back in now. That's just a case of popping them down like this. You can see probably at Artemis could probably do, make a, a lot better design if they, if they put a little bit more thought into it. But like I say, they do work better than not having anything at all, like so. Uh, and then what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to screw the cap on here, like so, to stop them falling out. And they're the only two pieces you've got now, so you could keep them. All right, so the Mark Dempsey shroud. Here's the Mark Dempsey shroud. Really light, compared to the smaller Artemis one, it's even lighter. It's carbon fiber box. As you can see, it adds probably another four and a half, maybe, yeah, four, four, four and a half inches onto your barrel length. The Mark Dempsey one is also bigger in diameter. So I'm no obviously scientist, but I should imagine the bigger diameter here, when the muzzle blast comes into it, it obviously dissipates uh, better. And because there's extra length, there's more baffles in this one. So this one uh, is going to be a lot more quieter than this one. Now, these retail at £65 uh, from Mark Dempsey. Uh, and I'll put a link to his stuff in, as I've already said. Same as for Jake. Uh, and the same as for Damien West. 
Now fitting this, it's really simple. It's actually easier than taking the old one off. So this, because the rifle's barrel's already screw cut, just fits on like so. And twists like so. So you can see it's added a little bit more. As before I said, it just comes over. It's added a little bit more length on. Uh, but the difference is this. Listen to this. I'm going to cock it and fire. <laughs> and again. And one last time. So all I can hear is the tiniest little puff. And it sounds just like a puff of air coming out here. Uh, and the click of the hammer. Now the click of the hammer is louder than the puff coming out the end. That's how much it's quieted it, quieted it down. So having that extra bit and the volume with the baffles what Mark's put in here uh, has made an absolute massive difference. Uh, put a pellet uh, in the machine and then cock it and fire it. It will even be even quieter than not having a pellet in as the air is behind the skirt of the pellet. But yeah, that is super quiet. Uh, and if I was to stand back, maybe about three meters back now, that is it. Jake Bowman's been in touch with me again, uh, uh, and he sent me another one of his items what he's uh, 3d printed to a really high quality again uh, and this is a mount you can see it's a two-piece mount what clamps around the barrel of the Artemis at the cylinder part I'm just getting it right for you like so like that look you see where the barrel goes goes through and it allows you to have a weaver adapter rail there and a weaver rail on the other side uh, and these I'm just looking now uh, are £22.50 posted so another nice bit of a kit if you don't want uh, the mount on the cylinder like I've shown where the bipod fits you can have it for further back on the barrel uh, and you can have your torch or whatever uh, accessory you want on your rifle fitted and I'm going to fit that now and show you what it looks like okay hopefully here you can see I've now fitted the weaver rail uh, and it allows obviously it fits in that gap there allows for like I say a torch or an accessory it's fitted quite easily it's got four screws what come with it uh, Phillips type screws uh, and it takes about one minute to fit and I think it looks really good actually like I say it will allow now if, if I don't want to uh, have the three-way mount here but I still want a torch uh, or my infrared laser rangefinder for night time I could actually put it on this side here so when I'm actually shooting or looking through the night sight itself or the night vision unit I'm going to use uh, I can see the range on the night vision laser but that looks pretty awesome now Okay then, in this part we're going to take a quick look at the Damien West night vision setups uh, and this is part of it so you can see really well made uh, it's been absolutely quality made inside there there's a 16mm uh, lens so you get adjusters on the top here uh, and two grub screw ones underneath so it allows you to obviously fit your scope on, I'll show you that in a little while. Get rubber bands here so the cables can go through, it keeps it nice and tidy. Uh, an input port here for your screen. An on off switch and also what I've got mine, I've asked him to put uh, the AV out here. But there are AV outs coming different places uh, and you've got a charging port here. So with the kit itself you get obviously the camera and the adapter here which is all comes as one the good thing about this unit is these you don't you don't need a battery pack because the batteries are already inside built inside uh, and the on off switch there obviously turns on the unit no batteries so less leads 
you get the charger, which I said fits in the bottom there to charge. You get a HD screen like this one, it's a tilting screen uh, and Damien fits all the attachments on the bottom of the screen uh, which is obviously a weaver adapter to allow uh, to, f to fit together and work. What you don't get with this unit uh, is an IR light source so Damien lets you pick your own because different people have uh, different options and uh, different ideas of how much light they want. What I've got here is a new T38 so it's the same size in diameter as a T20 but it's got the new chip in so I don't know if you probably can't see that uh, inside some of the old chips are like square uh, and they've got a line down the middle this one's square with no line down the middle and it's supposed to throw quite a lot more light uh, than the T20 so it's a big improvement uh, so this is a three mode so press it on the back once it will be low medium and high uh, and it takes one battery I think it's the let's have a look hopefully it's written on it it's the uh, 18650 3.7 volt battery I've got in there look, like so takes one of them and I just take a few spares I've never had to actually use the spares to be fair uh, and what I also have bought is an adjustable mount like this uh, off eBay uh, and this allows you to adjust for up and down and left and right so once you've got this on you can zero the light the source to the actual uh, where the night vision unit is looking it's a really good uh, extra piece of uh, accessory what I use for night shooting so fitted the unit and as you can see there's only one lead because as I said the battery packs in here the lead goes underneath the rubbers uh, and into that like so it fits really it's really firm uh, and if I turn it on turn it on I don't know if you can see that that's it like I say no battery pack needed because it's a 16 mil lens you get a really big crosshair I don't know if you can actually see that but you will when I start showing you through the PV1000 it doesn't add that much weight to it because even though that might look bulky it's not and the beauty about this is if you've got a bipod on and you want to and you're doing a bit of ratting and you've got it on the floor or rested on a table uh, sort of like this level instead of having to look down like that what you can do just tilt your screen like so. So, if I was, imagine I was on a table now and this was resting on a table, like so. Instead of me doing this, all I need to do is that. So I move the screen to my eye instead of my eye to the screen and then it will allow me then to shoot. All the mounts, what to mount it on, uh, so the screen, obviously to the rifle, uh, all come as part of the packet as well. So Damien does two models of this night vision unit and he's got a deal on at the minute on his website and I'll put the link to his website. So currently uh, he's doing this unit here for £147 uh, with all the parts I said less for the torch and the adapter which you can buy on eBay yourself for 20, 25, 30 pound and it should have been 167 but like I said now it's 147 uh, and he's stating that this will see a viewing distance of 200 meters at night which is plenty or you can have the same model with a 200 meter viewing distance which should have been but now it's down to 190 and the difference is it's a Wi-Fi model uh, so no need for leads really uh, and that's got a Wi-Fi distance of a quoted of 50 yards so plenty so if you are interested uh, please go on the website or email him uh, and ask him but for anyone who's on a budget but still wants a high quality night vision unit which works really well and as you'll see later on from the footage this works really well 
uh, especially when I'm recording through a PB1000 which is a top of the range 550 pound piece of uh, recording equipment uh, so I'll give you the best picture I possibly can uh, through this at night. Down he goes. Using JSB heavies now, I've been testing them and they're absolutely pinpoint accurate even at long distance and they hit really hard as I've known from using them in the past and as I said fell straight out the tree up. This is the tree it was in. Heart and lung shot, dead straight away. Oh, how about that for a shot? That was a long range shot, but the Artemis P15 absolutely nailed it with these um, JSB heavies. I said they was pinpoint accurate. The calibration I've done on it even shocked me. Well, today's really good conditions for shooting. It's just after first light, uh, and I get probably about an hour and a half on the farm before the farm staff come. So you can see I've got the custom. P15 here uh, and that crowd just took in that tree it was really really long range uh, but done a lot of calibration good conditions today and I know how accurate this rifle is yesterday uh, when practicing I put five shots at 55 yards uh, in a slight breeze down the center of one of the long cow barns with this where the JSB heavies uh, and there was under three quarters of an inch uh, and that was in a slight breeze uh, in the cow shed so I know how accurate it is. Now that crow was a little bit further than that, but as you hopefully see, when I edit it, it went straight down with a perfect headshot. So I'm really pleased with that. So I told you that yesterday, when I was testing these JSB heavies, I had a five shot group, which was under three quarters of an inch. There's the group with JSB heavies. Now, over time, I've been using different pellets uh, and the exacts in the wind are not as good. So they're a group of four with exacts, which is probably an inch. There's about six shots there, which is probably an inch and a quarter. And then this one was the worst one. Uh, but you can see the difference with the JSB heavies they're a lot better in the wind and the rifle really loves them and this is at 55 yards uh, in a breeze so I'll just turn around and show you where I was shooting from so when I say a breeze it's only a slight breeze because I was laid prone on the floor and that barn there is about 60 70 meters long so I was up there laid prone shooting down yesterday uh, and testing them and you can see that's pretty good I'm really pleased with it in this tree here. I'll have to put a finger on editing if I uh, get him. I don't know if you'll see him fall. That one's 49 meters. Nice headshot as you saw. Straight down. 
49 meters is about 54 yards so yeah again like i said 49 meters 54 yards on the laser nice sentry bird on top of the tree keeping guard basically while the others feed uh, and it's just come in now and obviously he couldn't see me in the dark cow shed uh, took him out nice shot there dropped him one and a half mil dots of old over with the Bisley he uh, JSB heavies uh, and there's definitely a difference from using JSB exacts to JSB heavies uh, I've noticed when I used to shoot them in Laura's Ratworks Reaper uh, when they hit they hit with a massive thud the uh, impartment of the kinetic energy seems to be a lot more uh, and seem to get a lot better kill especially on rabbits as well notice a lot of damage uh, and it's really humane so I'm really pleased that this rifle likes them because I do like a heavy pellet for hunting I don't know if you can see that or not but that's uh, one of the crows or jackdaws what I shot at 49 meters from top of this uh, this tree here Nice standing unsupported wood pigeon and there. See him again, real hard hit with the JSB heavy and down he went. Well as you can probably see behind me and maybe here on the phone, camera I'm not sure, the wind's got up now. Uh, so it's gone from being really just about perfect this morning to really windy. Uh, so I'm going to call it a day. Uh, I can't really get close to a lot of the quarry I'm shooting on this dairy farm is very wary and they've come uh, to realize that when they see me turn out in my car with a gun that quite a lot of their clan seem to die and disappear uh, so all shots are sort of like between sort of like 40 uh, and 55 meters so about 60 yards uh, and I'm not going to be taking them sort of shots in this wind because it's just unfair So on this night it's raining and it's quite misty uh, and normally I get a rabbit in this field so I'm scanning and then bushes there and later on when I come to the left you'll see the fence is well over 150 meters uh, and you can see the rain on the camera but you can still pick up rabbits uh, and see that distance even in these conditions. Now I've got the T38 on and it's on high but I've not got it dialed in uh, to be a narrow beam. So it's probably on medium and there's still enough light there. It's probably looking at over 200 meters now uh, to them back trees. You'll see these horses. The rifle is loaded at this uh, point, hence why I'm going really careful around these horses. You can see how clear the picture of the horses is. And there's his mate there, look. At the back again is probably over 200 meters, maybe 180. I'm just guessing. I just know the permission. It's quite far. Uh, you can see here. Nice and clear, close range now. This rabbit's just about to hop in, but he's around about 37 meters, and I get him cleanly. So here's the first bunny. Nicely dispatched, quite big in that one. Beautiful head shot. See the uh, pellets exited the eye there. What you'll notice about this shot here, I take the shot and I've got the Mark Dempsey shroud on. Uh, the rabbit goes over and then I'll pan up and there's two rabbits just sat there. Uh, they don't even uh, run off. But the only reason they start running is because the horse gets a bit frisky. It just goes to show how quiet the Mark Dempsey shroud actually is. Here's the second one. You can see blood coming from the nose. Sign of a perfect headshot. This shot was quite awkward to take because I was actually resting right next to electric fence and I was really frightened they were going to get me. Uh, but you saw I took it nice and cleanly uh, and in a little while when I go and show you that picking the rabbit up he was just about to go down his hole. Uh, so I was very very lucky but you can see the picture is really clear. So here's that rabbit. It was just about to go down the hole there look. Uh, and he was taken with the P15 and as you've seen there, the Damien West night vision unit. <sighs> he 
You don't get much better shot placement than that, do you? That's why he went over. I'm not sure if this is in focus properly. I'm only using my phone. But there's the three rabbits. I'm just moving it. And there you go, look. Artemis P15 with uh, the Damien West night vision unit. As you can see, it's absolutely spot on. Plenty. Damien reckons 200 meters. Obviously, IR source dependent. I think with a T38, you'll get over 200 meters quite easily. I've been out, what, 10 15 minutes and three rabbits. Look at the med shots. Look at that. Absolute perfect. So this is the first rat of the night and look how clear the picture is. You can see in each individual ear on the rat's back. Now I go from times seven to times two uh, and pan down and you'll see the rat uh, just flickering with nerves on the floor. And later on when I go to pick him up, his head's halfway down a grate and he is a really big rat. He's as nearly as big as my size nine willy. So you can see where the rats have chewed through. Great massive plank there, look, that's a run. Uh, you can see some nesting material there where they've chewed. And if I come down, hopefully, I'm not going to lose focus. And they were that big one. What a shot. And that is a big one. He's actually head stuck down the uh, grate. I'm moving with my welly. I'm a size 9 welly. And his almost body is almost the size and massive. This rat just wanders out from underneath this metal construction here. You can see his mate's just there as well. Uh, so I need to give him a little bit of hold over. And you can see, bowled him over straight, we shot straight to the ear. Uh, and he went over, he hardly flicked, look. A little flick of the tail there. And another one, it's a big old rat that. So this rat's just come out one of the pens and he's just about to go through the hole in the wall to the other side of the pig pen and I take him uh, with a nice one and a half mil dots of older because he's quite close. I then zoom out and you'll see he flicks through and I have to actually retrieve it by going inside the pen. There's one of them rats. I'm not picking him up. I haven't got any gloves. I forgot my gloves tonight. But the farmer will get them in the morning. This rat's a bit further than the others uh, and he just pops his head out again which was a mistake. So I put the crosshairs on him because I think he's around about 33 yards, 30 meters. I'm not quite sure, but you'll see in a second. I flick the uh, night vision laser rangefinder on and flick it on the wall. It's another monster rat. Yeah, big one. Now, there's no rat shot here, but I left this bit of footage in because I was actually scanning for rats, and it just goes to show all the different contrasts and uh, picture quality look of the different items. So, you've got a bit of ground there, and then straw, and then the wall, more straw. And then there's some sort of farming uh, machinery in a tire. And look at the uh, quality of the flickering is uh, me moving the lead. But, I mean, look at that. It's really, really clear, that picture. This was my last attempt at one of these rats. Uh, I was going to go for that one, but I wasn't sure what was going to come around the corner. So I went for this one, and unluckily I hit one of the actual bars, so that rat got away. So someone commented on one of the Facebook groups, I think it was yesterday or the day before, and says, Si, why you got that little scope on the uh, Artemis P15? Why don't you get 50 mil on? Well, you can see now why I don't need a 50 mil. Uh, this scope, I believe, has got 16 times um, like coatings inside to help gain light and stuff like that, especially at night. Uh, and it's crystal clear optics and you can see it works absolutely brilliant with the uh, night vision equipment so I can see really far uh, even when I zoom in I don't lose clar clarity uh, and I get a really crystal sharp picture uh, that allows me to shoot accurately to max ranges just with uh, a time 7 scope with a 32mm objective lens this is an Orc Air Max 2 to 7 by 32 AO uh, and for anyone We've got a little bullpup like this, Artemis P15, or any rifle really. My good old mate, one of the admin, Len Smith, uses one. He swears by them. They're absolutely brilliant. So please take a look if you're interested in having a scope. Uh, have a look first, uh, and if you like, then go and buy.